Another question we often get asked is how many questions will the examiner ask me in each section? Again, that's really um, depends on the question. Some questions is they'll ask you between five and six, maybe approximately questions. But again, it depends. So, for example, when they ask you about um, your daily vehicle checks, what checks you would do before um, using the vehicle, they would um, just allow you to carry on. And if you cover all the aspects and all the points that they wanted, they're just going to, in their little folders, etc., just click their button that you're covering what they wanted to hear. So there's no set amount of questions. Just remember, study, learn everything there is. Don't just learn questions that you know your trainers covered um, basically with you. Get as much knowledge as you can about the different subjects. Study up, watch videos, you know, book lessons, and book with a trainer who covers module four. Um, in, in you know, rather than just someone saying go and watch a video somewhere, actually book on training. That's what we do. So. We're giving you just some of the basic information. Remember, our clients will come along to our classrooms and we cover all aspects of the driver's CPC to make sure they understand how to check vehicles properly and what to look for. Doing your job properly, basically, for the real world. It's not just about learning the answers to certain questions. You need to know and have knowledge on all aspects of driving a truck, basically, or driving a, driving a bus, minibus, etc. Again, I'm Paul from Learn Away. Thank you for your time and hopefully this has been helped. Um, please like us and subscribe. Uh, this does help us to um, decide whether we're going to continue to give more um, information out. And be, feel free to email us, learnourway at aol.com. You should find the link as well, okay? Um, we do HCV training, minibus training at the moment. Um, so if you want to book lessons, etc., or tell your friends all about us, um, we're based in Midside, Liverpool. We could be expanding at some point, so um, just bear us in mind. Okay, thank you. People often ask on the module four how many questions the examiners will ask. The exams have a list of questions that they're going to ask and each question there's a different set amount they don't really explain how many questions are asked all you've got to know is each question represents a section and per section there are usually about um you've got five sections in total and you have to score 20 percent from your section so five sections you need to get um, no more, no less than 15%, so it's out of 20%. So if you get 20% in each section, you've got 100% on your exam. If you get 15% in each section, you will get 75. That's not a pass, that's a fail. So you need to, if you need to get a minimum of 15% in each section. If you got 10% in one section and 20 in all the other sections, that's 90%, that's still a fail because you can't get less than 15% in any of the sections. But remember, that would not get you to pass. So the pass mark in total, you need to get 80% in over all five sections. So remember, no less than 15%. So if you get a 10% in any section, you will fail. So you need 80% out of the 100 to pass. Section one of your CPC is your ability to load the vehicle with due regard for safety rules and proper vehicle use. This one's usually one of the questions they ask you is you you suspect your vehicle's overloaded. Show me what checks you would do before you take your vehicle on the road. So again, you're covering all the um, your loading. You know how heavy, um, how what load is your lorry allowed to carry or your bus, how many passengers, etc. Um, so you go, you're covering, you know, your first thing you need to know is the constraints of your vehicle, what it's allowed to, to carry, and then how you check the load, and, you know, what you do if you still think it's overloaded. There's many things on this question, but start off by finding out what your vehicle is entitled to carry. If it was a bus, you know, they'll tell you on board how many people can 
sit in the seat and what the capacity for standing inside your vehicle is as well on the bus. Section two is about the security of the vehicle and contents. So this one is about, you know, where would you be, um, first of all, you may be given a different vehicle and um, what checks you would do. So you would do your normal daily checks if it's a different vehicle to you. And remember to do your copy drill as well. Um, also, they could ask you, you've been asked to, you need to park overnight, where would you, where's a safe place to park your vehicle? So you cover all the safety aspects of where you would want to be parking your vehicle overnight. And also you'd explain how you'd make your vehicle safe and secure before you leave it. Lock it up, set alarms, check all the doors are locked and secure. Section three is about your ability to prevent criminality and trafficking of illegal immigrants. So this is where you're going to check out your vehicle for any um, contrabands that may have been stored on your truck while you've left your truck. Maybe at a port or something or a um, place before you've entered the port, etc. Um, or you're actually checking for people, you know, on top of your vehicle, underneath your vehicle, hiding somewhere on your vehicle. So you'd be demonstrating that inside the back of your vehicle too. Section four is about your ability to assess an emergency situation. This could be you've got a fire on board while you're driving and what procedures would you do to make your vehicle, get your vehicle stop safely and then what procedures you'd follow um, once you've stopped. Section five is about your ability to prevent physical risk. This is your daily walk around checks. So you do your daily walk around checks, however you've been shown to do them. Um, with us here at Learn Our Way, we tend to do our daily checks from inside the vehicle um, and then we go outside the vehicle and we do them outside. Because um, we like to make sure the handbrake is applied before we are doing any checks on the outside of the vehicle. So it's your daily checks and remember once you've done your daily checks inside and outside, you can use a sheet for this. Um, which your trainer may have provided you with, hopefully. And also remember to cover the cockpit drill as well. So cockpit drill after your daily checks are done, cover that too. 